magical. Believe it. Whoever insults my hair will get the full brunt of my fury. Shut up, you idiot. Hey, it's me, Goku. As one might assume, Jiraiya and Naruto directly after the bout would head into the village to see all of their friends and comrades to be alive, some more injured than others since the Rene Reaper rebirth still only brings them back to life and doesn't exactly heal every wound. The most important person throughout this bunch is actually Tsunade as she had sustained severe injuries and had actually not died when the jutsu was cast and is currently in a comatose state after exhausting both her own chakra and that of the hundred healings. So they would come to find her being hospitalized from here on going forward and the village in need of a temporary Hokage. But of course, since Jiraiya is present and not currently dead, and through some convincing from Naruto, he would temporarily take up the mantle as the Leaf Village's new Hokage. This means instead of Danzo, who had originally been chosen, Jiraiya would be there taking, uh, taking part, I guess, within the 5 Kage Summit arc. But obviously, before we could get to the 5 Kage Summon arc, there are more things we need to go over, as in Naruto and Jiraiya needing to heal after the battle, as it was rather intense, Naruto revealing everything he had experienced throughout the battle, and on top of that, what had happened with Sasuke. Sasuke during this time had actually gone through the B fight, once again, exactly as canon since there weren't any changes before the time skip meaning that sasuke's every interaction sasuke basically has will follow near exact canon and thus we could lead into the assumed death of b and the calling for the five kage summit and with that comes a new interesting adventure to go over as there will be many changes. Of course, the fact of Jiraiya being Hokage means he would be able to pick who accompanies him. And in this case, it would be Naruto. And on the other hand, it will be Kakashi. Obviously, Kakashi and Jiraiya don't have the best relationship, if any, but I do see this to make sense, as the village would not want Naruto accompanying Jiraiya alone, but Jiraiya would obviously insist to have his student come along, having proven himself to this degree. And seeing as Danzo is in a Hokage, no one can actually tell him no. Moving on, the information about Sasuke being the reason for the Five Kage Summit to be called would still reach Jiraiya, and thus Naruto would ask him to uh, try and retract the claims, or at least deny the claims, to declare Sasuke a rogue shinobi. Jiraiya would obviously say that he would try his best, but can't actually make any promises as to the demands of the cloud can go to a high degree, possibly even being a full-scale war. And if that's the case, the Leaf Village would simply not be able to handle that right now. Naruto, now most likely being both distressed and upset, would go to the rest of the Rookie 12, or what remains of them, revealing this information to the group. Thus, this would set into near exact events, the uh, ongoing, I guess you could say, of what happens in the 5 Kage Summit arc. In this case, it would be the Konoha 12 being accompanied by Yamato, whilst Kakashi and Naruto follow along Jiraiya, as Jiraiya never uh, gave the green light for the Konoha 12 to follow along. They individually do know that Naruto asked for uh, Sasuke's pardon on the side of the leaf, but they also know that this might not occur. So the group would, in their opinion, or in, out of their own actions, set out to confront the Raikage, meaning instead of Naruto this time, it would be the group of the Konoha 10 as a current. So we then see the split that originally happened, and in Naruto's place, we would see the Konoha 12 asking of the right Kage to pardon Sasuke. And on the other hand, we get to see what actually happens in the five Kage summit. Danzo not being present and instead Naruto, Jiraiya, and Kakashi gives us an interesting turnout to say the very least. 
As Sasuke would appear in the hall, I guess you could say, of the Five Kage Summit, he'd be surprised of Danzo not being there. As both he and Obito, who had ordered him to go, or at least gave him the information that Danzo had be there, be surprised that Jiraiya had been there instead. Obviously, both of them had assumed that every time Jiraiya had rejected it prior would be kind of a foreshadowing to him doing it again. Meaning the uh, next logical choice being Danzo. So in fact, Sasuke would be disappointed and thus confronted by Naruto. This is where things actually do start changing. Since we have the presence of Naruto at this hall, we would actually get a earlier fight between Naruto and Sasuke. But before Naruto could actually engage, the situation would unfold with the Raikage being the first to attack. Thus, we would lead to similar events up until the removal of the Raikage's arm, where Naruto would demand to take over the fight. And this is where things actually get interesting. Naruto would make multiple clones who would jump out into the shadows, which would give Sasuke a type of reaction. And in this reaction, he would actually make fun towards Naruto, saying that sneak attacks won't work on him since his eyes have reached their ultimate level. But regardless of what Sasuke says, Naruto still pr pursues his actions. He stands still for a moment as his eyes gain a weird color with the obvious sage markings on the sides of his eye and his eye gaining a purple hue with a slit through it and three tomo. This would give Sasuke the almost instantaneous uh, reaction of attacking Naruto, which would lead to a confrontation of Sasuke wanting to know how Naruto got those eyes, screaming at him, calling him a murderer, traitor, all that type of things, with Naruto not really understanding what is going on. But as the bout continued, mostly being taijutsu at this point, Naruto would ask what Sasuke means. Sasuke, getting obviously frustrated, or clearly frustrated, would scream out, Your eyes! You have the Sharingan! Why do you have those eyes? With Naruto finally realizing what had happened. He would finally have a flashback, or at least his first flashback, to every single time Kurama had taken over his body as of yet. And with this he comes to the realization of Kurama taking a pair of Sharingan and inserting it, inserting it into himself, meaning he is in current possession. Naruto would get defensive, trying to thwart off Sasuke's attempts, saying that he had not stolen it, it had to be the Nine Tails or something else. As he tries to explain, this would just lead people probably like Jugo and Soigetsu to attack, which then leads to Gara and Jiraiya interfering. This would once again lead to Sasuke getting stuck in a very horrible position, almost getting erased by particle style, needing to be saved by Obito. And as you might have guessed, this would lead to Obito's declaration of war and the start of the fourth great shinobi war, leading not only to his vanish, which would have originally ended in Sasuke killing Danzo, but instead this time into a mini scale invasion on one of Donzo's bases. This means that Donzo is currently alive and Sasuke had taken out his rage on foundation members through tracking Sai, which might also lead to Sai being injured and so on and so forth. But this leaves us with a living Donzo, since it is nearly impossible to know which exact facility he is currently in. But along with all that happening, this would also be a great time to introduce the fact of the Great Shinobi Alliance, where all the villages come together as one, and even the after effects of the Ka Five Kage Summit arc, with Naruto actually approaching the Raikage and apologizing for B's disappearance. But as Naruto would usually do, he asked the Raikage to forgive Sasuke. Being slightly infuriated, the Raikage would attack Naruto, but all of a sudden, a tentacle would appear blocking his way. Thus, he would come to the realization that B had not actually been captured, and he would thus go on a rampage, beating the ever-living crap out of B. Naruto, all confused, would try to interact with the Raikage, who would just yell him off, 
and after a while had passed and the Raikage had cooled down, B had revealed that he had actually used a tentacle clone to fight off Sasuke while he used it as an opportunity to get out of the cloud. Obviously, A would scold him and so on and so forth, but this leaves them with two Jinchuriki left. Obviously, Naruto as the Nine Tails and B as the Eight Tails. A, knowing that Naruto has a target on his back, actually comes up with a last moment idea and would suggest for them to go to the Waterfall of Truth and for B to train Naruto how to interact with his tailed beast properly. B, seeing this as another excuse to be pardoned of his shinobi duties, would take it up in an instant, with Naruto attempting to deny uh, the request from the Raikage, but Jiraiya backing him, saying that it's actually a pretty good idea and Naruto should go along. He would also reveal that as soon as Tsunade is awoken and well enough to take back the place of Hokage, he would join Naruto leaving the young Uzumaki at a standstill, not knowing if he would instead learn how to harness the power of the Ninetales that had been torturing him for so long, or at least tormenting him indirectly for so long, and going back to the village to see his friends. But before he could come to a decision, the revelation of the Rookie 10, or what remains of the Rookie 12 being present, would give him the confidence to push forward, as all of them would give him some form of reassurance as to this being a good idea. As per usual, Sakura would have that scene where she says that she loves Naruto, with Naruto revolting once again in a slap, saying that she shouldn't be, uh, she shouldn't be a traitor like Sasuke is. He would rant on for a moment, revealing some of the events that occurred during the Kage Summit, and would end it off saying that he knows that her heart is not true to him, and she shouldn't manipulate herself to think so. And thus, we would leave off with Naruto going to the Waterfall of Truth, not from some sort of sense of duty, but instead out of anger for Sakura, and a need to get away from the leaf, even if only temporary, Meaning we can skip over the travel hassle and the concept of them needing to be notified of the Waterfall of Truth, also indicating the early arrival of Naruto, meaning he would have more time to spend within the Waterfall.